Hello, everybody. This is uh, Nisha Parveen, representing Trade Promotion Council of India. And I welcome you all to this exclusive Food Frontiers episode series. And today, we have with us Ms. Meera Jhala, who is the founder and CEO of Progo, a pioneering online frozen food delivery service company. Frogo has quickly made a name for itself in the competitive frozen food market by offering a diverse range of products, including ready-to-eat meals, snacks, and meal kits sourced from, from both well-known and innovative food brands. Ms. Mira is a seasoned entrepreneur and has experience and a vision you know, for the food tech companies, she is steering Frogo towards a significant growth in the food tech industry. Under her leadership, Frogo focuses on enhancing convenience and quality in the frozen food segment, providing customers with access to over 800 products. The company's commitment to quality and customer satisfaction is evident as it continues to expand its reach. With plans for growth beyond Gurugram into major metropolitan areas across India, her passion for transforming the food landscape aligns perfectly with the goals of the Food Frontiers podcast. We are excited to invite Ms. Meera Jhala to our podcast to discuss her journey, the challenges and triumphs of running a food tech startup and her vision for the future of Rogo. I thank you very much for accepting our invitation and, uh, you know, and discussing, and I look forward for today's discussion. Thank you, Nisha. It's my pleasure to be here. And it's commendable what uh, you guys are doing through this series of Food Frontiers podcast. Uh, food is a very significant part of every person's life. And it's encouraging to see that the focus is being given to this sector. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I think uh, we can now just start, uh, you know, our discussion. My very first question to you is, Frogo aims to, you know, redefine the frozen food market in India. Can you elaborate on your vision for the company and what motivated you to start this venture in the frozen food industry? So Nisha, I've spent my entire career in the food business. Uh, I have seen a steady exposure to frozen foods in the Horeca as well as in the retail market since 2009 uh, is when I started my first business in India. What I have seen is that uh, for any Horeca business to have a consistent taste uh, you know, focus on quality and, uh, you know, a focus on costs as well, frozen is the only answer. And I've seen uh, more and more brands increase their exposure to frozen foods. Uh, there are several reasons for this uh, increased, uh, uh, you know, usage of frozen foods. One is that frozen freezing is the cleanest form of preservation. Once a product is frozen to uh, sub-zero degrees, which is negative 18 degrees Celsius, there is no chemical or preservative that needs to be added. And the micronutrients in the food are preserved and they're kept intact. So uh, businesses are realizing that it's a very viable option for them to use this uh, as a tool for consistent uh, experience for consumers. And retail users, people like you and me in our homes are also realizing that frozen food is clean. Uh, and uh, uh, this industry currently, just the domestic retail industry is a 50,000 crore uh, uh, you know, market. And it's growing at a 17% CAGR. So this clearly tells us that the consumers are also opening up to the fact that frozen food offers them variety, convenience, as well as, um, you know, um, the convenience of having the products in their freezers 
and the true meaning of instant, uh, you know, uh, and less preparation is addressed through this category. This is what drew me uh, to starting up Frobo. This was uh, back in March of 22, um, when I started on this journey. Uh, also re research showed me, and this was an astonishing number, research showed me that about 30% of an urban Indian consumer's grocery basket in the next five years is going to come from the frozen category. Uh, so it's clear that there is the demand is coming. However, the as a consumer on the ground, the experience with this category was still quite broken, and that's the mission we set out to fulfill. Good to know that. I mean, it's it, it's a huge market if we look at the numbers. So. My next question to you is, given the challenges often uh, associated with the frozen food delivery, you know, that there have to be, uh, you know, specific, uh, you know, kind of uh, way of delivery, otherwise it would melt. And so how does Probo ensure a seamless and satisfactory customer experience from order to delivery? So in the frozen food supply chain, in the entire ecosystem, uh, we can divide that into three parts. Um, the first part is a production, which happens in a uh, you know, factory, uh, from a factory to a warehouse. This movement of frozen foods is called first mile. Then from the warehouse to a dark store or to a retail store is called mid mile. And then from a dark store to an end consumer or a, dark, or a retail store to the end user, it is called last mile. So we can divide this into three parts, first mile, mid mile, and last mile. The first mile, uh, you know, largely happens from a factory to a large warehouse. This is, uh, the uh, movement also happens in large refrigerated vehicles where the products are stored at negative 25 degrees. Generally, we have seen that this is not, this is a, uh, you know, well-regulated sector. And because the brands themselves are in control of the products, the temperature is maintained and the product movement happens in a, a satisfactory environment. Now, the biggest challenge that I have seen on the ground in this industry is the movement in the mid-mile from a warehouse to a dark store or from a warehouse or a distributor to a retail store. Um, this is a very broken and fragmented industry. Uh, there is not much uh, you know, transparency in terms of uh, temperature tracking. There is not uh, too much accountability also um, that uh, you know, the transporters or the logistics players take during this time. So what Frogo is doing is that we offer to the brands the entire uh, integrated services of warehousing plus logistics. And we do this by uh, giving them uh, access to uh, temperature uh, data loggers, which tells them real-time temperature. Uh, uh, we also ensure that the vehicles that we are using are uh, you know, certified and we ensure that the product is maintained at negative 18 degrees, which is the temperature where frozen food needs to be maintained. So we ensure uh, that the movement is happening according to the norms of this industry. Um, that is uh, great because I, I think that, that was the main challenge earlier uh, the frozen uh, startups were facing. So yeah, my next question moving on to you is, what do you consider to be Frogo's unique uh, selling propositions that set it apart from uh, other competitors in the frozen food market? And how do these elements reflect in your product offering? So what we've seen in the frozen food industry is we've already talked about the growth that is happening, 17% growth year on year. Um, so that's on the customer side. So the demand exists. On the other side, there are new brands uh, coming up almost on a daily basis that are developing and manufacturing 
really innovative products that speak to the aspirations of the consumer today. So supply exists. So there's demand, there's supply. What is missing is a form of distribution, a reliable form of distribution where the frozen food brands can reach the consumers in a, a transparent, reliable uh, way to be able to service the customer's expectations exactly how uh, the manufacturers intended it to be delivered, right? So this is the gap we are fulfilling. So Kroger does that by doing three things. We have a vast dark store network, uh, which is specialized for frozen foods. The infrastructure is built specifically keeping frozen foods in mind. And we give that uh, distribution to our brands. The second is that the brands uh, onboard their virtual stores, which are fully integrated um, to all the, uh, uh, the aggregator platforms, the marketplaces, e-commerce websites, their own websites, all the channels through which they can uh, service their customer demand online. So we give them a virtual store, which is fully integrated. We give them specialized infrastructure. And three, we give them dis distribution to newer geographies and give them reach to larger customer base. So that's how we do uh, address uh, this challenge of missing the distribution link from the demand and supply. So Frogo essentially is dark store as a service for frozen food uh, and other food brands. So yeah, in a way, you kind of uh, organizing the unorganized sector and also helping those small uh, businesses <laughs> to scale up. Right. So yeah. our customers, not only uh, the uh, new age brands, not only the D2C brands, but very large established uh, Fortune 500 companies that uh, are in need of distribution for specifically for this sector, which needs specialized handling, even mm -hmm. those brands are uh, customers. That is uh, amazing. So moving on, uh, you know, about the cold chain, I, my next question to you is, you know, cold chain management is very crucial for maintaining the quality of the product in frozen food. Could you elaborate on the measures that Frogo has implemented to ensure, uh, you know, effective temperature control throughout the supply chain? So like I was sharing with you, that the products need to be maintained at negative 18 degrees uh, throughout the supply chain. Now we ensure that there is temperature logging, real-time temperature logging um, that is updated on a dashboard every in the interval of 15 minutes uh, constantly. We ensure that there is transparency throughout the supply chain to us and to customers, to our brands, to ensure that their products are stored exactly at the temperature where it needs to be. Uh, we use the technology that is available uh, in the industry, the IoT temperature loggers, the data loggers are available and we use them through uh, throughout our logistics, through our warehousing, as well as through our dark stores. And what are the current trends, uh, you know, in the frozen food industry, like you have observed till now? And how is Frogo ad adapting in these trends uh, to meet uh, changing consumer demands? So one thing is very clear in today's uh, customers, there is a heightened need for convenience. The consumers today want convenience over everything else. Uh, we are seeing, you know, with the rise of quick commerce, we can all see that convenience is important to a consumer. Uh, frozen food fits rightly uh, into that need of convenience uh, for a consumer. Uh, if we look at the online uh, landscape uh, of, uh, you know, customer shopping behavior, on one end of the spectrum is the quick commerce, which is uh, which offers 10 minute delivery, 10, 15 minute delivery. And on the other side is the Amazon flip carts of the world uh, that offer one to three days delivery. What Frogo is doing is something right in the middle. We give brands an option to uh, have 
between 30 and 90 minute delivery from the micro market where they are seeing demand. So uh, a brand is able to list their products on our dark store and be able to service uh, a wider customer base through these stores and have control of what they're selling, what offers they want to run, how they want to generate demand. So they have control as well as access to quick delivery to the dark store network that we are building. And um, could you also, uh, you know, give us a brief of uh, what kind of products, uh, you know, are uh, there that uh, they reach out to Frogo for? So our first use case in frozen foods, uh, it, within frozen foods, ice creams is a very large segment. So we uh, have all kinds of ice cream brands that uh, leverage this network of dark stores. Uh, the second line of products is the frozen foods, a uh, non-ice cream category. So there is, uh, you know, there are a whole bunch of snacks, uh, the potato snacks, kebabs, ready to eat, ready to cook, cut fruits and vegetables. There's a large variety of products that are available within the frozen section um, outside of ice cream. So we service all of that. We also mm -hmm. service all of chilled uh, products, so your dairy products, your uh, you know um, dairy-based uh, beverages, uh, uh, and you know juices and all kinds of products that need to be maintained at zero to eight degrees. Uh, also, we have ambient products, um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, nutrition-based products, uh, brands leverage our platform. Uh, you know, there's a brand that sells their ghee, there's a brand that wants to sell their uh, masalas and ready-to-cook mixes. So any food company that wants to use uh, a dark store network to reach their customers quickly, uh, mm -hmm. they're able to... Uh, stock with us. We also have a lot of, uh, you know, now with the festive season coming, we have a lot of gifting in terms of food uh, gift packs, uh, chocolates, mithais, uh, all of those also that we sell through our network of dark stores. That is good to know. Then um, I, I, I believe a lot of businesses would be coming because as Diwali is approaching and it's a festival season, Right. Yeah. So how important is sustainability in Frogo's uh, operation and what innovatives are you pursuing to promote environmentally friendly practices in sourcing and packaging? So, uh, you know, logistics part of the uh, frozen food industry, of the cold chain industry, and uh, the logistics vehicles that we use, there are two types of cooling that happens. There is one that is active cooling, where a refrigerated vehicle is cooled uh, through the power of the diesel engine. On the other side is a passive cooling solution where a product is charged overnight, then it maintains the temperature. So all of Frogo's vehicles are passive cooling vehicles, which are non-polluting. So it is important to us that we, uh, you know, uh, take use of all the innovation that is happening to reduce our carbon footprint and to have more greener practices. Uh, there is also uh, PCM technology that is uh, now being used uh, and is available to uh, the cold chain players to ensure that we are uh, uh, using less energy to cool the products and to uh, retain the uh, temperatures much longer uh, without polluting. So Frogo uses all of these uh, practices uh, in the logistics and movement and storage of the uh, frozen food products. And we are constantly on the lookout for new technologies that are sustainable and that can be implemented at scale. Uh, you know, as we are scaling, we need to ensure that the product integrity is also maintained. So uh, we are looking forward to implementing more and more of such solutions. Yeah, th that that is, uh, I think, very important to reduce the carbon footprint in the coming time also. And uh, as an entrepreneur in the food sector, my next question to you is, what are some significant challenges uh, you have encountered while building Frogo? 
And how have these challenges shaped your business strategies and any words, uh, you know, uh, or any suggestions for the government? So the biggest challenge that I saw in the frozen food industry was the distribution, right? Uh, you know, there are very few avenues uh, where frozen food companies can reliably sell their products. Um, we have the entire uh, Kirana store network in our country, right? However, for the frozen food category, it is quite broken because uh, there is not enough shelf space. Um, there is not in, enough, uh, you know, focus on temperature. Uh, um, there is not enough reliability of uh, power to ensure that the products are kept safe. So amazing products, you know, really great products are being developed in our country, but a lot of them are being exported. And uh, a lot of them are not accessible to the Indian consumers. Um, so Krogo's endeavor is to make these products that are manufactured in India are made available to the Indian consumers, uh, which is why we are building the dark store network to give the brands access to a larger customer base across cities uh, to uh, for these consumers to, to truly enjoy and appreciate these products that are built in our country. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of amazed. So I kind of also do some research and uh, I know that a lot of commodities are exported and uh, Indian consumers don't even know about that. So I love this part that uh, you people are working in India for Indians, you know, at least they get to, uh, you know, have that product. So looking ahead, what are your goals for Frogo in the next few years? And are there new markets or maybe, you know, export market or product lines you want to explore as part of your uh, growth strategy? So Nisha, like I just said, building for India, for the Indian consumers, for the Indian frozen food and other food brands um, in the next uh, three to four years, uh, Frogo will have presence in 45 cities, servicing consumers across these cities via the dark store network. And the product line, our first use case has been frozen food. We are expanding this. Uh, we already are, uh, you know, servicing um, foods that require chilled uh, supply chain as well as room temperature ambient products. So we want to build a dark store network and give food brands a reliable distribution network to reach the consumers and let the Indian uh, customers use their products and have their scale and growth story in India itself and not having to go to foreign markets to sell products that are made for us here. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Any um, suggestion or, uh, you know, to government that you would want in policies for the frozen food tech companies? I really do hope that the government continues to make investments in cold chain. In the last <laughs> five to seven years, the government has made significant investments in this industry. And I hope that they continue to do that and uh, help build the infrastructure backbone that is required for this industry. Um, I also hope, uh, you know, that we continue to build the highways across cities, connecting more and more uh, states and regions. Uh, the more highways that we have, the better accessibility uh, will the brands have to reach customers in uh, not only in the top five, seven cities, but in all the, uh, you know, remotest parts of the country and make their products available to them. Hmm. The government has done uh, amazing work in the last seven years, and I hope they continue doing more. So, yeah. Um, so I think that was the last question and uh, we are at the end of uh, today's discussion. So I love what uh, Frogo is doing, what you are doing, you know, overall. And I wish Frogo a very, very good business in the coming time. 
And thank you so much once again for accepting the invitation. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking to you.